Hello my friend, I hope you're well. This week we're going to be going over some of the basic principles of mindfulness, this time from the perspective of John Kabat-Zinn rather than the Plum Village tradition. If you're new to mindfulness, then welcome. If you're an experienced practitioner, then I would invite you to apply your beginner's mind and enjoy the refresh. Welcome to Mindfulness for Beginners. Let's quickly start with the basics before we discuss John Kabat-Zinn's seven attitudes of mindfulness. So what is mindfulness? It's helpful to start with the misconceptions. Uh, it's not about trying to clear your mind, so no one can sit for 20 minutes doing a meditation without having uh, some thoughts that bubble up. It's natural. It's not about trying to be happy or trying to be calm uh, because that doesn't work. Uh, it's not about trying to achieve enlightenment or nirvana. Uh, John kabat describes mindfulness as the awareness that arises from paying attention on purpose in the present moment and non-judgmentally. Mindfulness is about the here and now, focusing 100% of your attention on whatever it is that you're doing and being present with whatever you're experiencing. So that might be what you're experiencing in your body. And if you've ever been to a yoga class, then you might have done a body scan at the end where you're focusing on different parts of your body. It can be applied to your thoughts and feelings so you can notice thoughts that arise and observe them and allow them to pass out of your awareness without being swept away, even if those are thoughts that have uh, associations with anger or sadness or anxiety. And you can apply it to just the normal things that you do every day. So you can apply it to walking. You can walk mindfully. You can really notice the movement of your body as you're going from one place to another. You can eat mindfully. So you can focus on the texture and the flavor of the food that you're eating and the origin of the food that you're eating. And you can apply it to your household chores like doing the dishes. So rather than being off in the future and thinking about what you're going to do next, really being present when you're cleaning each of the pots and pans. So an easy way to start to do this is to focus on the breath. So if you make yourself comfortable and just bring your attention to your in-breath and your out-breath, breathing in, I know I'm breathing in, breathing out, I know I'm breathing out. And as you continue to follow your breath, noticing that column of air between your nose and your diaphragm. And you can notice different things about your breath. So you might notice how your in-breath feels cooler. And you can notice how your out-breath feels slightly warmer. You can notice how your shoulders rise as you breathe in and how your stomach falls as you breathe out. And you can also notice the natural rhythm of your breathing, not trying to breathe in any particular way, just breathing in a way that's comfortable for you. So noticing where an in-breath ends and an out-breath begins and where an out-breath ends and an in-breath begins. And we can do this any time, at any moment during the day, when we're stressed out, when we're relaxed, when we're watching TV, when we're walking. And in the Plum Village tradition, we call it returning to the breath. And John kabat really recommends seeing mindfulness not as a relaxation technique that you do once a week but more as a way of being so we can and we should start off with uh, our mindfulness practice sitting down for a guided meditation and getting used to that and we're going to do one of those later in this episode but where mindfulness really starts to transform our suffering into joy is where we apply that awareness to our everyday life and 
he describes seven attitudes that form the fundamental pillars of the practice from his perspective. And the first of those is non-judging. So paying attention to your opinions, the thoughts about things that arise. And John kabat talks about how the human mind sorts things into boxes. Uh, so these things are good. We like those. We want more of those. These things are bad. Uh, we want to stay away from those. We don't like thinking about those. And then there's neutral things that we don't really notice. And by taking a perspective of non-judgment and by building our awareness, we can take the most joy from the good things. We can accept the bad things and they do us less harm. And we can become more aware of the neutral things and realize how much they contribute to our lives. Like the chair that you're sitting on. And that sounds kind of ridiculous, but if you think about um, a day where you've been uh, on your feet all day and you finally get to sit down and you think, oh, that feels absolutely amazing just to sit down. So we have access to that at any time uh, and we can take that joy from sitting in a chair any time that we want. And in a mindfulness practice, we try and do that. We try and feel joy and gratitude for the neutral things in our life. And that's how you cultivate happiness. Of course, we still have judgmental thoughts that arise. Everybody does. Uh, but we can simply observe them and let them pass without acting on them. The second aspect is patience, letting things unfold in their own time. And mindfulness isn't difficult to learn, but it does require patience and it does require persistence. It can take some time to see the benefits of it. You really do need to stick with it for a while. Uh, doing it once a week is helpful, but when you make a little bit of time for practice every day and do that consistently for a few weeks, then the evidence shows that it actually starts to rewire how your brain works and you're training yourself to be happy. And it's also about being patient with ourselves, not setting expectations for achieving a standard in a specific time, uh, being patient with others who've lived their lives through a set of circumstances that we're not aware of. The third dimension is beginner's mind. So seeing the world as if you're seeing it for the first time, and seeing all the infinite possibilities. Knowledge, uh, which comes with age, can limit our perception of what we don't know. And part of mindfulness is getting comfortable with the unknown. And when we accumulate a lot of knowledge, we become jaded by experience. We can lose touch with the joy in our lives. If you look at your dog, look how happy they are. They're not applying a theoretical framework to whether they can catch their tail they're not thinking about all the times that they failed to catch their tail. They're not thinking about what might happen in the future if they catch their tail. They just chase their tail. They just go round and round and round. And to me, dogs are masters of living in a present moment. And we can learn a lot from them. Uh, the fourth is trust. It's an important attitude to cultivate, starting with ourselves, listening to our bodies, listening to our senses, uh, observing our mind. Trusting that if we let go of anxieties about the future and regrets from the past and live in the present, that everything will be okay, because it really will. And when we cultivate trust in ourselves through our practice, when we build our calmness and peace and live in the present moment, we start to trust other people more because we're not jumping ahead to what they might do or questioning their motives. We're existing in the present, taking their words and actions at face value. Really listening to other people with an open mind is when we start to make really strong human connections. The fifth is non-striving. So we're always trying to get somewhere. We're always running towards a destination. That's, you know, it's the, the human condition. But an important aspect of mindfulness is realizing that you've arrived in the here and now. We can't live happily in the future. If everything that we're doing is to achieve then we sacrifice our well-being in the present. We tell ourselves that we'll be happy when we get promoted, when we get married, when we have kids, when we retire. It's always somewhere off in the future, but this is the only time that we can be happy in. 
Mindfulness is sometimes called the art of stopping. Sometimes we have to ease off with the future plans and just enjoy where we are and who we're with. The sixth is acceptance. So accepting that things are the way they are, which is not to say that you don't do anything about it. The idea is that you're aware in the present moment, you see things as they are, and then you can decide in an informed way what it is that you want to do. There's a myth that mindfulness somehow makes you okay with injustice and suffering. <laughs> really, the opposite is true. When we accept the world in front of us, accept people as they are, accept yourself, then, then you can start to act out of emotional intelligence and compassion rather than anger and fear. And the last is letting go. Letting go of the attachments that generate our suffering. When we're attached to relationships, our jobs, our looks, change is inevitable and everything is impermanent. By identifying the attachments that we have, uh, we can start to trace the roots of our anger or fear or sadness and understand why we react the way that we do in certain circumstances. And once we apply our awareness to our attachments, we can start to understand ourselves. We can start to feel compassion for ourselves. And then we can start to let go of our suffering. There's a great deal more that I can go through in depth, uh, but you'll see that there's many other podcast episodes that delve into some of these themes. So have a look through and enjoy them and let me know what you think. Uh, let me know if there's areas that you'd like me to go into detail. But for now, we're going to finish with a guided meditation. And I'll start with a settling in introduction, focusing on our posture, our body, our thoughts and our breath. But I would just invite you to remember the golden rule for meditation. Thoughts will arise. Uh, we don't beat ourselves up for that. We allow them to pass and we return to our breath without judgment. So if you want to make yourself comfortable, I'll start with three sounds of the bell. So firstly, focusing on the posture, and I would invite you to imagine that you have a thread attached to the crown of your head, and it's gently pulling you upwards into an upright position. Your spine like a stack of coins, your heart raised upwards and outwards. Your hands comfortably in your lap. And moving your awareness to your body, noticing if you feel warm or cold, and noticing if you feel tense or relaxed, becoming aware of the sensations of the clothes against your skin, and the points of contact between your body and the chair and the floor. Focusing your attention on your thoughts and feelings. And as we go through the guided meditation, noticing each thought as it arises, and that might be an anxious thought about tomorrow. It could be a happy thought about today. It might be a sad thought about yesterday. Just sitting with each thought for a moment, allowing it to leave and gently and without judgment bringing your attention back to your breath and finally focusing your awareness on your breath 
Noticing that column of air between your nose and your diaphragm. Noticing how your shoulders rise as you breathe in. Your stomach falls as you breathe out. Breathing in, I know I am breathing in. Breathing out, I know I am breathing out. In, out. Breathing in, my breath grows deep. Breathing out, my breath goes slow. Deep, slow.
Breathing in, I calm my body and my mind. Breathing out, I ease everything. Calm, ease. Breathing in, I smile. Nothing is as important as my peace. Breathing out, I release all tensions and worries. Smiling, releasing.
breathing in, I establish myself in the present moment. Breathing out, I realize it is a wonderful moment. Present moment, wonderful moment. Opening your eyes, taking a moment to stretch your back or your legs if you need to, noticing any changes in your mind or in your body. You may be happy, you may be peaceful, and may you see yourself through the eyes of understanding and compassion. I feel 